In this video, we'll set up an attribute holder. I've set up a teapot in this scene that um, has on top of it the attribute holder, which can be found in the modifier stack somewhere near the top. Attribute holder basically allows us to steal attributes and parameters from other elements of the scene and hold them in a common location. The attribute that I'm going to drive here immediately is the height of the box. Then we'll eventually wire up our attribute holder to the other elements in the scene. I've produced um, an attribute holder in here for box. We'll look at how to produce one of those uh, for the other items here shortly. And once I've got uh, an attribute holder set up, then I want to link that up to the item in question. This is a sense like putting the button on the remote control and now we have to connect the button to the item uh, that's being communicated with. I'm going to right click on the teapot and pull down to where it says wire parameters. We should find inside there a tree that allows us to get to the box controller that we see up here inside of our right column. A rubber band will then emerge from off the side of the teapot, which is no longer the teapot technically, it is now the remote control. And we're linking the remote control up to the box. I'm going to left click on the box and then it's going to ask me, well, what button do you want, uh, what element do you want this button to be connected to? I'm going to have this linked to the box height. A subsequent dialog appears which allows us to relate the teapot attribute holder to the box in question. This here will be a two-way connection. The subsequent examples I'll show will be a one-way connection. So should we physically change the height of the box, then the value would change inside the field over here. But the maximum amount that the box will be able to range between is 0 and 720 um, units in height. I'll go ahead and click on the two-way arrow and then we'll click on connect. We'll go ahead and close the dialog. You'll notice the box instantly turns to a value of 0 in its Z direction. That's because that's the value that's over here in the attribute holder. Should we scrub up and down inside this attribute holder, we'll now see that the box height has been tied to the attribute holder. Next what I want to do is tie the rotational value of the sphere here to the height of the box. Now it could be that we attribute holder, but I want to show you here how we can link together a whole series of items in a scene um, into a kind of Rube Goldberg-like choreography. I'm going to select the sphere and pull down to where I find my wire parameters pop up. And what we're going to do is tie the transform, rotation, Z rotation of the sphere to the box and it'll be the box's height. Okay, This will be a two-way connection. If I have a chain then um, if one is two-way, then all are two-way. We can't mix and match uh, the way these things communicate with each other. And if you were looking carefully, you might have noticed that the sphere um, instantly changed its rotational value. If we come back to the teapot now and look at our spinner and change the value inside of this, you'll note that the sphere rotates as the box changes in height. So we've linked or wired the rotational value of the sphere to the height value of the box and that's all being driven from the attribute holder inside the teapot. Okay, so next, what about hooking up one of these armatures to the teapot? I have two versions of the armature and um, it doesn't really matter, we don't have to do both, we can just choose one and understand the same process with each. What I want to do is link the IK solution to this arc I've drawn, thereby constraining the amount of movement IK armature. Uh, you could simply move this around manually, or we could use the attribute holder to change the X, Y, and Z value of the IK solution. It's easiest to change the movement that we'd like into a geometry that would be followed. With the IK solution selected, I'll go to the motion control panel and we'll look under the Assign Controller Rollout. Inside the Assign Controller Rollout, what I'm looking for is the position of the IK controller. Okay, With the 
position selected, we can click on the button here that says assign controller. The kind of controller that we want is a path constraint. What this will do is constrain the IK controller to a specific path that we choose. Once that's been selected, you'll see inside here that there's a place for us to select path. If I click on the add path button and click on the path that we'd like to use, we'll see now that the IK solution has been moved to the end of this arc. Any animation of this armature or any movement of this armature is going to be tied to its percent along the arc. If we look at the spinner down here below add path, you'll notice there's a percent along path spinner that allows us to reposition the armature somewhere along the path. Next, let's set up a controller from the attribute holder that would change the percent along path of this IK solution. If I go back to my animation pull down and pull down to the parameter editor, I'll find once again the place where we can add and manipulate the controller buttons that we might place over here in our interface. This new one will be a float value and I'm going to choose slider in this case because my value will actually be somewhere far less than 0 and 160. I'll give it the name arm2. You'll see that um, 160 is the value of the pixels across um, the full column there and the range is going to be between 0 and 1. The way you measure movement along a path um, inside the attribute holder is in cycles. So one cycle would be one pass across this arc from beginning to end. Not some number of degrees um, or some amount of rotation. So I need to be certain that the value that's in here is something slightly greater than zero and something slightly less than one. So I have a value of between 0 0.01 and 0.99. And it's a good idea to start off with a default value that um, is no greater or lesser than the two values inside here. This is what our controller will look like. We'll go ahead and click Add. You should see now that it's been added to our list. We have the controller for the box and now a controller for ARM2. Next what we need to do is hook this up to the ARM geometry. I'll right click on the teapot. We'll pull down to where we find our wire parameters button. We'll pull down to the Modified Object, Attribute Holder, Custom Attributes, and find the ARM2 button. Next, we'll move on the rubber band over to the IK solution. Not the rest of the arm, not the dummy, not the arc, but the IK solution is what's being animated here. We'll click on that with the left button, and this will be IK goal position percent. So it'll be the percent along the path there. And yes, it does say percent, but um, strangely enough, it's still measured in a value between 0 and 1. So 0 being 0%, 100 being 100%, or I like to just state this as a single cycle. So the same dialog we saw previously comes up. Uh, we can set this up to be one way or two way. It's not linked to the box and the sphere, so it's not the same thing. So one way makes the most sense. The controller is doing all the work here. We'll connect. Once again, uh, we see instantly that the armature goes to the end of the arc, and that means we simply have to scrub the slider here back to the opposite side. So now we have a controller that moves both the arm and moves the height of the box, and the height of the box then has a corresponding impact on the rotation of the sphere. This is an attribute holder.